It is finally a Boston Bruins game day, and this team has a chance to clinch a playoff spot here on March 9th. How ridiculous is that? Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be. Today is Thursday, March 9th, and I want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to listen to Locked On Boston Bruins. You can subscribe on your favorite podcast app. You can subscribe on YouTube. And you'll want to do so so that you don't miss a thing down the stretch and into the playoffs. You can find the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Locked NHL Bruins. And you can find me, my dad jokes, and hockey tweets at Ian C. McLaren. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more by visiting fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. Yesterday on the podcast, I was joined by Scott McLaughlin of WEEI. We talked about a bunch of Bruins topics. You want to go check that one out if you haven't already. Today, we're going to talk about the opportunity before the Bruins tonight as they host Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers and just do some... Quick news and notes from this week's practices and what the lineup will look like tonight. But first, the Bruins, 49-8-5. They have 103 points. They can become the fastest team in NHL history to reach 50 wins. And they also have a chance to clinch a playoff spot when they square off with Connor McDavid and the Oilers tonight that game's on hulu espn plus so hopefully you'll be able to tune in up here in canada it'll be on sportsnet now boston can clinch a playoff berth with a win against edmonton it kind of depends on some other results as well there's some lesser teams in action tonight the ottawa senators uh the new york islanders taking on the pittsburgh penguins that's going to be a big one but Boston with a chance to clinch. Overall, 17 teams have clinched the playoff spot in fewer than 70 outings in an 82-game schedule. That was first introduced in 95-96. That includes two teams that secured a postseason berth in 63 games or less. The 95-96 Red Wings and the 1998-99 Stars. So the Bruins have an opportunity not only to become the fastest team to 50, but to clinch a playoff spot here tonight in one of the best regular seasons of all time. Now, it's not going to be easy, of course. McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl are the first two players to hit 100 points last season. They're back on track to do so again. McDavid already there, of course with 124 points. He's matched his career high from last year, already decimated his goal total from last year. He's got 54, 10 ahead of our boy, David Pasternak. Uh, Dreisaitl is four points shy. He's got 96. So he needs to put in a four point performance. It would be the second time in NHL history that the same teammates have been first two players to 100 points in consecutive seasons. You're never going to guess who the last two were. They played for black and gold. Phil Esposito and Bobby Orr of the Bruins back in the early or mid-70s, I guess. So it's going to be a great one tonight, and we'll preview it a bit more uh, later on in the podcast. The Bruins did gather for practice on Wednesday and I just wanted to touch on a couple big items from practice the first being Dmitry Orlov 
being bumped up to the power play, the top power play unit. It's been struggling for the better part of a month. Boston's 25 ranked power play in the NHL since February 1st. That's troubling. That's probably the one big, no, I don't want to say weakness, but one big um, thing that needs to be worked on in advance of the playoffs. And to that end, head coach Jim Montgomery trying to spark things, putting last week's first star of the week on the top unit. So Dmitry Orlov on the point with Patrice Bergeron, Brad Marchand, David Poshnok, Jake DeBrusque rounding out that unit. Now Orlov has been a force since joining the Bruins from the Washington Capitals, tallying nine points in five games. And of course, winning last week's first star of the week. Montgomery admitted the power play is kind of stalled. It's been flat. Uh, the Bergeron unit has only scored a couple goals over the last several games. And one of those being DeBrusque's first game back from injury. They have an opportunity to experiment here. So that's what they're going to do. Uh, and they're going to see whether or not McAvoy can find more success on the second power play unit. Um, He'll be playing with Hampus Lindholm, David Krejci, Pavel Zaka, and the recently acquired Tyler Bertuzzi. If you look at the way McAvoy uh, plays, the plays that he makes, he comes down the right wing, gets a pass, toe drag over for a one-timer. He's a very dynamic player on the move, and they want to put him in situations where he's set up to succeed, make the team better. And... So they're going to try Orlov as kind of a stationary guy on the point and then give McAvoy the opportunity to create plays, enter the zone, make something happen, and act as kind of a, uh, what do you want to call it? Uh, a rover, I guess you could say. Not quite a point man, kind of the... 3.5 forward out there, 1.5 defenseman playing on that second unit. So we'll see how that works out tonight against the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, Edmonton with the top ranked power play in the NHL. However, they are vulnerable on the penalty kill as they are ranked 24th, killing only 75% of their penalties. So uh, it's a good opportunity for Jim Montgomery to get some different looks out there and to see what Orlov can do on that top unit. Let's talk more about the outlook for tonight's game here in a moment. First, a quick word about today's sponsor, FanDuel. It's the stretch run in both the NBA and the NHL. Now is the perfect time to download FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book, and new customers get a no-sweat first bet of up to $1,000 in bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook, which is safe, secure, super easy to use, and you can bet on everything from money line to point scores, threes drained, if you're into the NBA. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. Don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, what else do we need to chat about here in advance of tonight's game against the Edmonton Oilers? Mm -mm. Taking a sip of my morning coffee out of my beautiful Locked On mug. Your team every day. Now, talked a bit about load management lately. 
And after taking maintenance days on Monday, a senior citizen discount, uh, Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci were full participants for Wednesday's skate, but they're likely to see more downtime over the final six weeks of the regular season. Uh, there's going to be some constant communication between the coaching staff, not only those two, but other players who might have some aches and bruises. Um, probably not starting to look this weekend, but there's another road trip coming up. There's some back-to-backs every weekend for the next five, uh, which is pretty nuts. And specifically, the defense core will get some breaks as well with extra men available. And you want to get Zborl into some game action in case you have to call upon him in the event of injury. You want to get Lindholm and McAvoy, even Orlov, some days off down the stretch to keep them fresh. So that will be a thing coming up, definitely, in terms of load management for the Boston Bruins. Uh, You know, they know it's going to be a grind. Their schedule coming up is kind of ruthless. They play every other night, back-to-backs for the next few weeks. And they want to make sure they're playing good hockey, building their game as much as they can because the playoffs right around the corner and they don't want to take the foot off the gas. Some injury news, of course. Uh, There's no change in the status of Taylor Hall or Nick Foligno, both of whom are expected to miss extended periods of time with lower body injuries. Montgomery said they both feel really good. They're at a place where they uh, can't even be thought about in terms of taking to the ice. So there's no real update yet and no feedback yet on a second opinion that Taylor Hall was seeking for his lower body injury. So nothing to update there. When it comes to some of the new guys, I loved this story that came out yesterday. Patrice Bergeron, the best captain in the NHL, helping Orlov, Garnet Hathaway, Tyler Bertuzzi, getting acclimated to the new team, locker room, city. Patrice Bergeron leading by example. Uh, Obviously, they practice like champions every day. There's a professionalism to what they do on the ice. But... His awareness of other people and being empathetic, uh, whether they're going good, whether they're not going good, Bergeron sees it, he addresses it, and he communicates with him, Montgomery said. And he said the best example was he met with several players because that's their job as a coach, to look and be aware of those things, pick up guys, hold them accountable, whatever the case may be. And a lot of times he'll be chatting to a player in his office and ask them, how are you doing, man? And they'll be like, Patrice already talked to me and I'm in a better place. What more could you want from your captain? Uh, just, just heartwarming. Now there's um, no real changes to the lineup tonight. You got Marchand, Bergeron, DeBrusque up top, the checkmates line, the second unit, Bertuzzi playing with Coyle and Trent Frederick. Fourth line of A.J. Greer, Thomas Noshik, and Garnet Hathaway. Orloff, McAvoy, Lindholm, Carlo, Forbort, Grizzlick with Zborl and Clifton sitting out as the extra defenseman. And it looks like Linus Allmark will get the start for the Bruins tonight. And he and Swayman are going to get a lot of action coming up. Uh, There's the game against the Oilers tonight, a back-to-back this weekend, a home-and-home series with the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, The back half of that begins in Detroit on Sunday. It's the first of a five-game road trip that will take them to Chicago, Winnipeg. Then next weekend, back-to-back Saturday, Minnesota, and then Buffalo on Sunday. And then again, every other night. Back home playing the Senators, Canadians, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. They'll host 
the Lightning, then go to Carolina before coming back to play Nashville, Columbus to round out the month. And then another home, uh, back-to-back on a weekend in Pittsburgh and in St. Louis. So it's going to be very rigorous. They have uh, no two-day break between games until April 3rd, 4th, and 5th. And then they play every other night to finish the season. So it's going to be a grind for the Bruins. It's going to be some different looks in the lineup with guys sitting in and out. And it begins tonight against the Edmonton Oilers. We'll talk a bit more about that team here in a moment. First, a quick word about Built Bar, which is one of my favorite snacks. And I got to tell you why. Not only are they delicious, but they are good for you. What makes them so good? Well, they come in amazing flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond. They're covered in 100% real chocolate, but they have amazing macros while tasting like a candy bar. About 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 17 grams of protein, and you don't need to wait around anymore to get a box through the mail. You can order them on Built.com, but you can also go to your local Walmart or Sam's Club. Walmart Pharmacy, they have four bar boxes of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. If you're close to a Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar box with hit flavors like brownie, batter, and churro. If you're looking for a delicious treat, but you don't want all the fat and calories, then you have to try a Built Bar. All right, Bruins and Oilers tonight. Connor McDavid coming into this one red hot. He's got 11 points, six goals over his last five games. And he's really running away with the Art Ross Trophy, certainly, but also the Richard Trophy. Ten goals clear of our boy David Pasternak in that race, which is kind of unfortunate for Pasta. He's having... An incredible season. He's on pace for, uh, let's see here. He's got 44 goals in 62 games, over 82 games. That equals 58 goals, which would smash his previous career high. McDavid already four goals away from that. In fact, he is four points away from the single season high in the shootout era. And he's also on track to challenge Alex Ovechkin's 68 goals. That is a single season high in the shootout era as well. Matias Ekholm fitting in very well for the Oilers. He's a plus eight over his last five games, as is Brandon Carlo for the Boston Bruins. Orlov leading the team in scoring over the past five games, nine points, three goals, six assists. And again, he's going to get a chance to add to those totals on the first power play unit for the Boston Bruins, which will be stacked up against the 24th ranked Oilers penalty kill. Now the Oilers do have the best power play in the NHL, 31 0.7% success rate. So you don't want to go in the penalty box tonight. They also have the league's best offense, 3.86 goals per game. Boston second at 3.79. So the difference in this one tonight could be the penalty kill for the Bruins, which needs a strong um, showing and goaltending as well as, um, The Bruins have the first-ranked defense, allowing only 2.8 goals per game compared to Edmonton, 21st, allowing 3.29 goals per game. I think Linus Allmark will get the start, and it will either be Stuart Skinner or Jack Campbell. Campbell really struggling this season with the Oilers, an 882 save percentage, so could be a bonus if he's a net for the Oilers tonight. 
I'm super excited about this game. It should be a great one. Of course, these two teams met uh, just a few days ago, February 27th. The Bruins coming out on top by a score of 3-2. to two, And it was a similar story in that one. Uh, the Oilers only had one power play opportunity, which the Bruins killed. So there you go. Staying out of the box is key. Connor McDavid scored twice, but the Bruins were able to keep the rest of the attack at bay. Skinner stopping 25 of 28 shots in that one. 893 save percentage with Thomas Noshik, Nick Felino, and Pavel Zaka scoring for the Bruins in that one. So look for... Some of the big boys to get it done tonight for the Bruins. And I expect another big game from Tyler Bertuzzi, who uh, seems reinvigorated after coming to Boston and has a couple practices under his belt. On tomorrow's podcast, we'll recap tonight's game. We'll take a look ahead at the games against Detroit, update the uh playoff atmosphere around the Eastern Conference and bring you all the latest on the black and gold here on the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast, your favorite team every single day. Happy Thursday, everybody. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And we'll talk to you again here tomorrow. Peace.